Yeah, you tell me now. How does that start? Uh, that's quite a big horn, so there's a good fillet of horn there on the front end, on the nose end. Yes. Uh, what I'll do with that then, I'll carve something on, and because that is so wide, I'd like to produce something like a collie. Yes. With the top head on it. I uh, was wondering how you did those. I was wondering, did you stick them on after? Uh, no, it's no, no, it's sticked on. It's all carved. It's all hand carved. Uh, Use little Dremel and the actual uh, tools that we use are the same as what a dentist uses on your teeth. Oh, uh, so they're good, li yeah. little burrs as such. Uh, yeah. And then different styles of dogs. Oh, that's uh, a lovely one, yeah. So that's a laying down dog. So that's partly formed now. I've just started work on, on the actual head itself. Uh, then marking out. That's a collie just marked out. Ready? Yes. So it's all done uh, through my through my mind, really. Uh, I don't use any templates or anything. Oh. I just draw it by hand, uh, and then I just carve away anything that, that doesn't look like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I carve away until it's left to be basically like a dog. Uh, uh, good man, you're a bit of an artist on top of it all. Uh, try to, try well, to be. Well, it's a sculpture, uh, I suppose. I, I'm quite good at copying things. If I can see something, uh, especially in a book or something, or in real life... Uh, the luckiness of it more than likely is I live in the countryside, uh, so what I see around me, um, I see them around every day. So I work with things uh, very often, like a pheasant head. Uh, if I see a pheasant uh, passing about, I'll take photos of that. Uh, and then I don't mind doing the odd trout as well. Uh, got a few, oh, I love those trout handles. Yeah, yeah. Got a few trouts on the go there at the moment. Uh, so that's the formation. Oh, that's how he starts trout. out, yeah. yeah. So I do it slightly... Different to the old traditional way. The old traditional way was to get Straight, everything in line. Yes. But if you give a kick to the tail, it looks that much more I, lifelike. I, I love uh, a bit of a twist yeah, on it, yeah. So, so it looks a little bit more lifelike then. And then that's basically, I lose a little chisel then to raise the, the actual fins and, and the little gills and everything. And then uh, it'll be painted all over um, and then to look like a trout. Oh, that, that'll be a brown, smashing fish. Uh, or a, uh, what do you call a rainbow. Uh, preferred with the brown because yeah, it's more nicer the, colours mm, in the brown than there is in the rainbow. Rainbow is more of just one type of colour, uh, but the brown uh, you get very. Oh, the red, red colors. dots in the brown is lovely. Yeah, it does make a difference. Yeah. And show us the Jacob's horn there. Uh, the Jacob's horn. That's where you start. You get uh, with the Jacobs. You get the uh, four horn variety and the two horn variety. The two horn variety. There's a head up there for you. A big head up there. I don't know if you're able to see. Yes. That's a two. That's a Jacob. That's a Jacob. Aye. That's a big, big Jacob. Uh, He's a big actually, lad, yeah. I actually saw that when he was alive. He, he was a prize, prize, prize winner. I <laughs> said to the chap, if he ever dies, I want that dead. <laughs> and lo and behold, I get up, got hold of it. Uh, Jacob is one of those horns. Any of the rare breeds, they throw what is known as a black and white to piebald type colour. Yes. The, the wool is piebald as well. Uh, so you get the Jacobs, which is the most prominent of them all. Uh, Jacobs then basically... I never knew that the piebald threw into the horn as yeah, well. Yeah, it goes into the horn. And if we turn around, that's the stick that goes to America with you at the moment. Uh, I've done a specific stick, but that's quite unique because the colour characteristics in that yes. is so, so unusual. Uh, I've never had a horn that's thrown as much colour as that before. Um, yes. So I showed it basically on Facebook. And within about 10 minutes, there was about half a dozen people that were interested in it. Uh, the girl from America, uh, she was the first to actually see it. So she had the first choice in it. Yes. Initially, I said that I wasn't going to sell it. I was going to keep, keep it in my own collection. Mm. Uh, yes, it'd be a nice one for when you be at Charles and yeah, Seven Sticks. Yeah, eh? but then um, she's a nice girl. Um, and I thought to myself, well give her the pleasure of actually using it out in America. And it's nice to think it'll go all the way to the west coast of America now. Yeah. That's a bit yeah, of fun. And she's into trialling as well, so hopefully it'll bring mm. her some good luck as well. Uh, and um, she basically was trying to find a way to get it over, and then she realised that yourself was going over there to a judge mm. uh, over in August, uh, and then she approached you and... She won't have to wait too long to too see Too long it. for it as well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So hopefully she'll be happy with it. Yes. Uh, so I've done a collar over the joint as well, Yes. Which is basically to strengthen the joint. Uh, so there's a collar. Yes, I wonder what the, color, what the colors are for. Yeah, yeah, so it strengthens the joint. And then the shank is what is known as a mottled, mottled hazel. Yes. Well, there's nice color characteristics in it. Uh, Ireland is a great country to get color shanks on. Oh, uh, yeah. Wales is not too bad as well. What we find uh, 
we find them in very wet growing growing land uh, if they're in a deep ravine uh, you get moss growth basically appearing on the shank yes and if you wipe the moss off there's a discoloration in the back oh uh, yeah so the moss is a good thing it helps it make it yeah. yeah it has to, and you've got to catch it at the right time because if you don't catch it at the right time uh, it will well the, the shank basically breaks down and the quality of the that, shank that's what i was wondering i i go out and cut shanks there in the fall um, but what happens if I cut one in the summer and leave it up there? Uh, won't dry the same? Won't no, be... they don't dry the same. Uh, what I was going over to say with this is if they're not cut in the right time, uh, basically the wood does go rotten if there's a lot of moss growth on it. Yes. Because it basically strangles a lot of, of the growth pattern in it. Uh, but the best shanks we're getting at the moment uh, are underneath coniferous trees. Uh, the acidity in, in the pines are dripping on to the actual hazel because yes. of the acidity in them. The rain comes on to the pine trees, drips on to the hazel underneath, and it discolors. Uh, bleaches uh, it or bleaches something. On, uh, yeah. And there's, there's a row of these. Uh, you were saying you were up in the Dolgesse area earlier on. Well, these have come from the Bala Dolgesse area. Oh. Uh, there's a sheep trialist up there. He trains quite a lot of dogs. Uh, and if I'm short of shanks, uh, he, he, he'll go out and get you a few. And get a few. So these have come down so from that's, him. That's the way they come in. Yeah. And then you straighten them up straighten and clean them up. up. So there, there's a collection of sticks now ready to go. These are going on Thursday. Uh, these are going down. Uh, I actually deal a bit with retailers as well. So these are going to a retailer yes. down the south of England. They'll, uh, they'll go on to a shop then. Yeah, go to a shop and then they'll be resold on. Uh, and so I have a couple of my sticks now are gone a little bit shook and, you know, getting banged around. How can I touch them up there? What's, what do you put on them? Is it just varnish? It's or varnish. Is, I, I like using polyurethane-based varnishes. Uh, that be a two-pack then? I, I like the two-packs, but there are some good products out in America. Um, it's getting difficult to get them into this country because the European legislation has altered in this country. Uh, so it's getting more difficult getting getting different polishes in from America. But there is a good uh, single pack. Um, it's it's not a well, although it's uh, polyurethane based, it's known as a urethane product and not a polyurethane. Uh, yes. So it dries basically. It cures as it goes into the air. Once it's applied, it cures and it takes about three weeks for it to harden off. And uh, oh, yeah. And then you basically just cut it back. This was cut back today now and just polished up, uh, ready to go to America. So yes. So it's packaged up now in a minute and it's ready for you to go on his way. Mm. Uh, I do carve names as well. Uh, oh, on, yeah, that's the thing I wanted to ask you about, yeah. Uh, that's that's machine cut, that is. I, I prefer doing the hand chase cut. Uh, I do it the old style of cutting, uh, but that was just an experiment on a laser cutter. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. To see how the laser cutter will work. Uh, Sp and it's worked speed up well. things speed a bit. Up things a bit. <laughs> the, the downfall of it, that the machine is about 15 grand to buy, yeah, yeah. So, so that's the downfall. So yeah, you need yeah. to do quite a lot of sticks <laughs> for it to pay, yeah. Uh, but no, it's a pleasurable time. I've enjoyed what I've done in my stick making career. Uh, been quite lucky that I've been taught with good people. Um, the it's a traditional type of craft work, uh, and it's nice that I, it's been handed on to me, and I'm hopefully handing it on to other people. Uh, I enjoy meeting people as well, uh, especially. The continental people, there are some really lovely people out on the continent mm. uh, at the moment uh, that appreciate my work and in America as well. Uh, and Canada, uh, Canada is quite a new country with me, but I'm selling quite a bit uh, of uh, sticks out to there. But a lot of whistles are going to Canada at the oh, moment. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, working close uh, with a lanyard maker out in Canada at the moment. Uh, Very good. She's so interested in my work. Uh, so I'm doing some whistles for her and, and we're in exchanging for some lanyards as well. And then there's a nice lass uh, from the north of England. Uh, she started doing some, um, some lanyards as well for the whistles. So she's brought uh, some examples recently over to me. So these were some lanyards that she's produced in leather. Um, that's actually kangaroo leather. Oh, yes. Um, and then she uses uh, different different hides as well from this country. Uh, so some of these are a mixture of suede and leather together. And others then are just... Um, leather hides then uh, so this is a girl known as Hattie Crabtree uh, she's from the north of England uh, we recently got together uh, Claire Galdard uh, and myself and Hattie got together and we did a photo shoot Claire uh, is a photographer up uh, in Elveston and uh, she got us together just to do a photo shoot uh, so with the leather lanyards and the whistles together uh, the whistles that I produce um, are so 
ornated colours. You get a variations of so much in the colours. Uh, oh yeah, so that's arranged yeah. Now. Oh yeah. Uh, you've got some buffalo horn there. We've got some rams on there. But the rest then are this mineralised polymer. Yes. It's mined from a gro ground, uh, so it's a ground mineral. Um, it's taken from the ground. It's like a rocky type um, consistency. Um, it's crushed and then additives added on to it with colours in them and bonded with the resin. So it's clinically safe. Uh, they use it uh, a lot these days in hospital theatres oh, yes. uh, because it's nice and clean, no yes. bugs attract to it. Uh, yes. So it's a nice medium to work with. Uh, and tell us this. I bet you whistle with your fingers, do you? I do whistle with <laughs> my fingers, but I've gone over to to, to the whistles. Uh, it's quite a high pitched noise with it. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. What's nice about it? It's quite easy blowing. It's not hard blowing. Yes. Uh, similar in shape to the old Fortune and the BBs that are on the market now. But they're so hard to actually blow, especially the old Fortune. These are so easy to blow. The advantage with these as well, compared with metals, this is the same temperature, doesn't matter if it's cold outside, oh, it's yes, freezing yes. outside, if it's hot outside, it goes into a mouth, oh, the nice. same temperature all the time. And the horn is exactly the same. Mm. It's the only two mediums uh, that I can work with that stays in the same temperature. Metals, when they're in the winter months, especially when it's freezing, they're quite cold yes. in the mouth. Uh, with the polymers, there's no lingering taste as well to them. Uh, oh, no oil metallic so it's taste. It's nice in the mouth yeah. as well. Uh, with the horns, then, I finish these uh, with a vegetable oil, so there's a nice taste in the mouth. Uh, yes. Horn does dry over a period of time when it's been in your mouth for a long period, so it's always advisable just to just dip, dip oil it up again, a bit, oil yeah. up a bit again. Uh, but the polymers are so easy to, to polish up as well, because uh, it's a nice mineral and you've got all different colours in them. And... Uh, well, I should think I've got uh, samples there now. I've got about 2,000 different colours in them uh, yes. to choose from. Uh, yes. So we can work then with lanyards. So if you've got a nice pink lanyard there, nice pink whistle to go with it. Yes. So it matches in then. Uh, so you've got nice contrasting colours together. So you've got a nice lanyard. A nice pink whistle to go with it. Yeah, you can have it whatever way you want. Uh, but I tell you, I like that, David. I like the fact that winter or summer, you get the same consistent yeah, uh, temperature yeah, of it. That's what's good about horn. It's even the same when you go to the crooks. You buy the metal crooks, uh, you know, the cheap end of the market. You've got the aluminium crooks. They're awfully cold, cold in the hand yes, in the winter. Yes, yes. But horn is always the same temperature in your hand. Uh, so it's a nice feeling in the hand as well. Uh, so we've got variations of crooks here. Most of the cream ones are from the Welsh Mountain Rams. Then, as I said, that was from the Jacob family. That's a black buffalo, so that's jet black in colour. Yes. So that's from the jet uh, black buffalo. We get, every so often then, coming in from India, we get what is known as the coloured buffalo. The white, they come from the white-skinned animal. Yes. The black come from the black-skinned animal. So it's a throwback in the gene. Uh, for every, well, I would say for every thousand black, you'll get the odd coloured one amongst them. Uh, so the colours then, I haven't got one here as a sample at the moment because they're so rare to get hold of these days. Uh, but the coloured ones, they're quite unique. Yes. Um, there's greens, there's blues. Oh, wow, well, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Them. Uh, and uh, at the moment, there's a premium on them because the value of the horn is anything between 45 to £50 pound just for the horn before you start any work on it. Yes. Uh, so we bring them in specifically for the purpose of selling whoever wants something unique uh, but at the moment we've got a big fight on with us at the moment because the Italians are buying them to make spectacle frames out of them oh wow and the uh, Japanese are buying them to make buttons out of them <laughs> so the price is just so <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're trying to compete with Dolce and Gabbana yes, there we are yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Dolce and Gabbana actually do them uh, they do make them in horn as it happens um, so that's another horn from the, one of the Welsh breeds. Yes, I see that's the white through it. Yeah, that's from the badger face, that is, uh, in our oh, breed. Yes. Uh, so that isn't showing as much prominent white as what the Jacobs does, but it's something quite unique. Uh, yeah, I quite like that. A bit of colour in it. Um, and then with some horns, then you get diffusions of blood uh, where possibly the two rams have been fighting. Yes. And that's what's happened there. Then you get a diffusion of blood yeah. appearing in the horn. And there's a pinky home or a pinky mark in the actual horn itself. Uh, so you, you get customers that spec speculate that they want that on occasions. Uh, so we, we cater basically 
for, for whatever whoever needs well, for me, we get. David, yeah. that's been very interesting. I just I see a clock up here, just in case anybody isn't sure what time we're <laughs> operating at here. <laughs> it's half twelve. So uh thanks very much for that, David. And it's been great to great to hook up to you. Thanks.